First he came up to my room and we were just sitting there fucking watching TV and he was just laughing at how fucking just beat up I was. You know, and of course he felt great because he was a fucking angel that night. And I, um, we ended up watching something on TV. One of the sickest stories ever. And we're like, dude, this has to be a fucking movie. And, uh, of course in the end they, they, they said that they were going to turn into a movie. It was basically about this guy, right? It was this fucking show about serial killers. So, of course, we're going to watch it, right? And I'm sitting there eating a fucking burger, you know, just trying to, you know, grease always fucking offsets the fucking alcohol. It's awful. I'm out of shape again, guys, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so we're watching this thing about fucking serial killers. And the whole time they're talking about this this drug dealer kid. And we're like, how the fuck does this... And they keep showing this serial killer guy. It's like, does, and they're showing the drug dealer older, you know, and not in jail and all that shit going, what the fuck happened? You know, just the way they put it together, it was riveting. You're like, what the fuck is going on here? So basically what happened was there was this kid, right? He played football. They called him the assassin because every game he ever played, he took somebody out, right? Was it the assassin? Was that Jack Tatum? Jack Tatum. Now I forget. But it was something like assassin. So he fucking, uh, and just movie star good looks. All right? And he's the star of the football team. And the lady's sitting there interviewing him going, as he's walking around his high school going like, so you were, uh, you were basically a legend here. And he goes, yeah, I was. He wasn't being arrogant. He said, yeah. He goes, they retired my jersey. They had like, pictures of me up on the wall and all that blah 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 all the women loved him i mean this guy was just like it was he he looked like a movie star and his life was a movie so his big achilles heel was he he didn't have money and he wanted to keep up with the rich kids so he started dealing drugs and he ended up being really good at it and by the time he was like 20 years old this fucking guy was making like a million dollars a year crushing it right He's got a fake, you know, wall in his walk-in closet where he's got another room where he's keeping all the money in a safe. He's throwing all these fucking crazy parties. And it almost seemed like this American greed type story as opposed to this serial killer thing. And they keep going back to this serial killer fucking piece of shit who's killing these girls, these teenage girls. So long story short... He's laying in bed one night and he's just thinking, I got to get out of this life. I'm so sick of looking over my shoulder. I can't do this anymore. How am I going to get out of this? But he's addicted to the money. He's addicted to the life and all of that type of stuff. And he hears this rattling on the door. And I'm thinking, oh, fuck, it's the serial killer. And he obviously fought the guy and won. What the fuck happens, right? All of a sudden, the door fucking blasts open. And all these fucking, was it? Is it the ATF that shows up when you get busted as a drug dealer? Was that alcohol, tobacco, firearm? I don't know what the fuck it is. So anyways, they fucking come FDA, Food Drug Administration, the uh, Transit, Chicago Transit Authority. I don't know what the fuck it is. Whatever the fuck that thing is, they come fucking blasting through the door, run up, you know, a bunch of guys with the fucking minor helmets on, with the fucking Uzis from a Steven Seagal movie, going, get on the ground, you fucking look at me, I'll blow your fucking head off. And the whole thing was over. And he disgraced his family name. And they never said it, but I imagine they probably took his fucking pictures down off of the high school and all of that type of shit. You know, did some OJ shit, right? Take all his trophies and all that fucking shit. So it's over, right? So then he's sitting in jail. Um, and they try to get him to flip. And this is it's just some fucking kid from the suburbs, right? So I'm thinking, well, he's out. He must have ratted somebody out. So he doesn't rat anybody out. He's like, I'm not telling on anybody. So then they're like, all right, well, fuck you. So now you're not going to help us out. We're going to fucking give you, you know, the full extent of the law. We're going to prosecute you. So they gave him 10 years. The guy gets 10 years. He's in like a minimum security because, you know, he didn't really uh, have any violent past or anything. He was just getting people addicted to drugs. That's all he was doing. (laughs) So his dad is devastated and all that shit. And he, he goes to jail. And uh, meanwhile, this serial killer guy is out there killing these girls. So I'm thinking, what the fuck? And they keep going to commercial. Me and Verzi are looking at each other going, how the fuck are they going to tie this fucking thing together? So long story short, um, 
they ended up catching the serial killer guy. Uh, I forget how he fucked up, but they ended up catching him. And one of those things where you seem re- like relieved and all of that type of shit. And, uh, but he had this thing where he wouldn't admit to all of them. And if he came at him, he would just clam up and wouldn't say shit. So he ends up going to jail for like either one or two murders for life. He's never fucking getting out. So meanwhile, there's all these parents whose daughters were killed by this guy and they don't know where they are and all they just want is the body. They want fucking closure. And these parents are just tortured by this fucking thing, all right? So they're trying to figure out because he won't talk to them, he won't tell them anything. And he's also in denial and he keeps going like, actually, I didn't kill him and blah, 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 blah. And then one day be like, oh, I did and I blacked out. I don't remember. Like the guy was just a fucking creepy goddamn mess, right? So they end up coming up with this idea that they need a charismatic person to talk to this, to befriend this serial killer, gain the guy's trust, and maybe he'll tell him where like the bodies are and that type of shit. So they go to this fucking dude, Captain America, you know, the football player, the movie star looking guy who fucked his whole life up because he got involved in drugs, right? And they approach him. To go from his minimum security to go into a maximum security prison with his murderers, rapists, animals, fucking maniacs, right? And, um, you know, to go in there and they said, if you, get, if you get this information out, we'll take your sentence and we'll just wipe out the rest of it. We'll set you free. He'd already done like three, four years. So meanwhile, Captain America's dad had a series of strokes, you know, and was basically going to die. And he had to go see him. I mean, it's like a fucking movie. So he goes, all right, fuck it. I'll, I'll do it. But I want it in writing that you're definitely going to let me go. So they say, yeah. So they go, all right. He goes, Here, they go, here's the deal. <clears throat> we don't want you to approach him for at least six months. Because he's very cagey. And if you fucking, you know, come at the guy the wrong way, he just fucking walls himself off and that's it. All right. So this kid comes, he goes in, he goes, fine, cool. And he walks in there. He's like, I don't have six months. My dad's going to die. Within the first two months, two, I'm sorry, first two hours, he goes into the fucking jail. And he fucking, uh, on purpose, accidentally bumps into the guy. And then he immediately apologizes. He goes, oh, I'm sorry about that, buddy. I didn't see you standing there. Hey, he goes, I'm new here. Do you know where the library is? And the guy tells him where the library is. And he goes, thanks, man. Uh, you know, and he said something to the effect of, uh, yeah, you're a good guy. Gives him a little slap on the shoulder. That's it. And goes to the fucking library. And they set it up where his fucking, his cell was right across the hall from the other guy. And he says to him, he goes, hey, man. He, he runs into him again. Hey, where are you staying? Blah, blah. He goes, oh, that's crazy, man. You want him right across. And he says, oh, it's good to be with a good guy like you. Blah, blah, blah. Right across from each other. And he goes, uh, so then fucking the serial killer guy. One day he goes, hey, you want to get lunch with me and my friends? And at this point, me and Verzi, we're fucking laughing our balls off, going like, this kind of social shit happens in prison? Like, hey, uh, some friends of mine, uh, gonna have some other uh, murderers and serial killers, we're going to get some, uh, maybe get some, uh, you know, a, a frap and a, a fucking rap or something? You want to come down? Just kind of hang out. <laughs> I'll meet you down the commissary, right? You always think it's all just getting shanked and trying not to get raped, right? So he goes, yeah, cool. So long story, he gains this guy's fucking confidence. And one time he actually goes in and he sees the guy. He's got a map with all these red dots on it and all that shit. He's trying to get to it and blah, blah, blah. So the guy starts opening up and he finally ends up telling him this fucking stories um, of all the women that he killed and all of that shit. And, uh, and sort of kind of mentioned, he gave him like sort of enough information about where the bodies were. And the Captain America guy kind of fucked up because once he got the information, he thought he had enough information to find all the bodies and get himself out of prison. And he just couldn't. Oh, wait, I forgot the best part. I'm sorry. This is going to be like a Tarantino movie. Now we're going to jump backwards. Another way he gained the guy's confidence was one day they were sitting in the TV room watching TV. He's sitting next to this guy and this big fucking giant dude just gets up and turns the channel without talking to anybody. And as he turns the channel, the serial killer, who was like a meek little guy, and he just kind of went, he just sort of said out loud to nobody, he was like, hey, I was watching that. Like, powerlessly, really fucking weird psycho thing. And the fucking Captain America dude walked up to the big dude and knocked him out. 
Just beat the guy's ass, hit him with an uppercut, fucking forearm shiver, and just sent this guy flying through some chairs. And then they stuck him in the hole. That's what happened. And then when he fucking comes out, tell me this doesn't sound like a fuck. I almost don't even believe it. So that's when he gained the guy's confidence. That's when the dude told him. And the second he tells him, this dude, Captain America, couldn't hold it in anymore. And he goes, dude, you know what? You're a sick fucking piece of shit, blah, 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 and flipped out on him. And then the guy, the serial killer just backed up and he goes, he goes, who sent you? And he goes, so-and-so sent you, right? And he named the prosecutor. And then he just fucking disappeared. And the map disappeared, too. So then it's like they didn't get the map. So there was a thing. We don't know where the fucking bodies still are, blah, 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 blah. But you got him to admit to these fucking murders. So we know that the women are at least dead, blah, blah. He, basically, then he did enough where he got out. Um, and the whole time we were watching this fucking thing, we were just going like, this is a this is a fucking movie. Now, I guarantee you when they do the fucking movie, they don't even need to add any mustard to it. But I guarantee you in the movie, he won't flip out in the end. You know, or if he flips out, but then he somehow, and then that'll be the last little like hiccup, like, oh no, they didn't find the map. In the movie, he'll find the map, and then the parents will actually get closure. But in real life, you know, it's not a fucking movie, and it sucks. But isn't that unbelievable? That that's like a, it's so fucking nuts. Like at one point, they were visiting his old house, and he showed, he goes, yeah, I used to live here. I used to live here. I had all these cars. I threw like a fucking twenty kegger here one night, and he goes up into the room, and he shows the secret place where his safe is um and, and you know those fort knox fucking things it's just i don't know man it was fucking uh an incredible story whatever whatever i know half of them fucking glorifying goddamn drug dealer right isn't that what i'm doing um and in the end i know you guys wanted a happy ending there wasn't a happy ending because he fucking he kind of screwed it up in the end but they still let him go though which is sort of odd right <laughs> 